five, four, three, two, one. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Pertzer from Delta Space Systems and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over two Frontier launches. The first of which, Flight 4, flew on a D-12 rocket motor. Flight 4 was pretty stable and fixed the issue that plagued both Flight 2 and 3. The issue that caused Flight 2 and 3 to fail was a problem in the state machine. The state machine shifts states between the rocket's flight. For example, it shifts states between the recovery and ascent. Another notable feature of Flight 4 was the addition of a nose cone. There was no parachute, but the nose cone was to help with aerodynamic stability. After that success, we started designing the parachute system for Flight 5, meaning there's a pyrogen igniter in the top of the coupler, which ignites the black powder, which pushes the parachute out. The parachute ejection system was printed in carbon fiber PETG to be resilient to the harsh environment that it was going to be in. It took multiple iterations to make it strong enough to survive a flight. Once the parachute ejection system was done printing, we strapped the rocket down to the launch pad and performed a parachute ejection test to make sure the rocket had enough power to push the parachute out. After we finished printing and testing the ejection system, it was time to print the final parts, including the airframe and the TVC adapter. Since we now have printed and tested all the components, it is now time for Frontier Flight 5. Even though Frontier Flight 5 was very stable in pitch and yaw, there was two major problems that occurred. One of the problems was there was a delay between when the rocket detects Apogee and when it deploys the parachutes. That caused the rocket to slam into the ground right after it deployed the parachutes. Therefore, the parachutes did not have enough time to catch the air and actually slow the rocket down. The other problem we encountered was upon impact, the SD card was bent. The file was corrupted and we could not get any flight data from Frontier Flight 5. The next flight will also fly an E-12 rocket motor, but there will be lighter components, no delay for the parachute, and we'll make a strain relief mechanism for the SD card. For flight 7, we'll be doing the highly anticipated 300 meter flight. It will be flying on a G25 rocket motor with a variable PID system. I'm Cole, the lead engineer at Delta Space Systems. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next launch.